Great, welcome ah, to our second week in Advent. We throw around this word blessed and blessed uh, frequently. And admittedly, it's usually in context of something good, right? Blessed. Uh, that was a blessing. I feel so blessed. We are living a life that's blessed. And so it's a powerful word. And in some ways, I think for me, I don't know for you, you'll have to think about this. It's a little bit weak as a word too, in how I hear it used and even in how I use it. How often I have said, uh, well, that's such a blessing. And I don't know that I am feeling into the immensity of what that word means when I'm saying it. And yet the word has an immensity. In fact, if you look at the etymology for blessed, it, it comes from references to the word blood, uh, blood. Let me, let me see if I can pronounce it. Um, it's blood and blodison. And what it's pointing to, blotham, is a consecration with blood. So the word blessing is a pretty powerful word if we look at the etymology. It, it's an actual consecration with blood, which is, is a dramatic statement. And so when we have the Beatitudes that are I put in as our topic for today, it might be nice to frame it like that, to, to frame every time you see the word blessed or blessed, to frame it like that, that it's an actual consecration down to the very element of blood, of our own blood, or the blood of what we're being consecrated in. Uh, so, so just bear that in mind as I read the Beatitudes here. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So when we look at this and in light of the etymology of that word blessed, what we have in this saying of Jesus, which many in different eras have used words like this. So these are not new to the humanity. Uh, Jesus didn't introduce something new here but he did introduce something that's foundational. When we take a look at this, we look that each one of these is a consecration of an inner state of quality. And what I believe is consistent in all of them is that there's, there's a simplicity of focus Right? You've almost got a, a transactional statement happen in each one of these. If you are this, you will be consecrated in such a way that this will be part of your reality. If you are this, you will be consecrated in such a way that this is what you will receive or experience. And 
it's interesting because there's always this open question when we've got transactions of, well, when will it happen? And when it happens, what is it that's happening? So for instance, the first statement, and I know I'm opening a lot of questions, almost like a Pandora's box here, but we'll be circling around. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we can get that, okay, poor in spirit, we can have a sense of what that means. And we know, okay, when I'm that, then I will be consecrated in such a way that I'm going to experience this thing we call kingdom of heaven. And it begets the question, well, what is the kingdom of heaven? And I believe that we are growing as a humanity to understand that there's an immediacy in all of this. There is like an instantaneous reward. This is not, I live a life poor in spirit, I'm consecrated, and then when I come to the end of my physical years, I'm going to receive something. Uh, that undoubtedly, I think, is so because I think our lives are evolving. But I believe we're growing as a humanity to understand that the, that when it comes to spirituality, the transactional nature is immediate. That there is a certain, that in the hope is the fulfillment, in the longing is the finding, that there isn't a gap, that the gap happens between where we are in our uh, meekness and where we are called to be in our meekness, that the gap is there. The gap is not, I'm meek and therefore I'm going to inherit something. Okay. There's a truth to that as well, but not in the absence of it. So I'm postulating that as we are meek, there is an immediacy of owning, of a, of a possession of our life and a possession of creation in that meekness that's immediate, that the, that the uh, qualitative experience is commensurate with how meek we are or how true we are to our grief or how pure of heart we are in the moment. There's... And there is a building upon that we're moving more into. So then it brings us back to the gap is between where we are and where we are called to be in all of these qualities, which reframes things with a real authenticity of focus. And we get to key in, I, I put in there in the newsletter, what's alive within you right now. Is it mourning? Is it mercy? Is it purity? What are some of the qualities that are alive in you that you feel a, a certain internal call to awaken up, awaken into more, to wake up into more? The title of this Advent series is Awakening Anew. Because I see our awakening not as a one-time thing, but as an ever-happening experience. And so it lets us focus in now on this, what's alive for you right now. Have you ever noticed, I'd like to use the blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Have you ever noticed that when you truly open up, when there's something that is a cause of grief, that when you truly open up and grieve, that there is an experience of comfort in the very activity of grieving itself. When you're, when you're authentically there, that you experience comfort. Have you found that in a moment when you were innocent, and in that childlike state of what we'd call uh, wonder or purity, that, that when you are in that place, that in a way you are looking out from your experience and encountering God immediately. 
Have you ever found that when you have needed to show mercy, that when you do, you experience the, the consecration of the mercy that's the well from which you're coming, that you're only showing mercy because you've experienced it even unnamed. I bet you can come up with some stories that evidence that immediate. And where then our growth point is, is first, what are we called to focus on now? And second, where do we, where do we have a bit of a gap? Where do we feel that there's an arduousness in, in these qualities? For instance, if we consider poor in spirit, maybe we have a belief system that makes that really hard. And if so, we might feel that opening up to, to our idea of poverty in spirit makes this kingdom of heaven notion out there as something that we, we hope for. Where do you have a gap? Where do you have a gap in these? To me, this notion of being blessed comes about as we grow in authenticity. And when I meet people that are authentic, that you know, you know what you're encountering, that are authentic, there's a tapestry of all these qualities going on in some, in some way, shape, or form. So the seeds of these then, of realizing we're blessed, is to discover that it's our birthright, that, it's, that we're, we're, what's being described here are qualities of you evolved, wherever you may be in your journey of embodying these. And that they don't need to be reached for, but rather awakened to. And then, of course, cultivated and stabilized in, right? That's part of our, our growth work is to cultivate and stabilize. Cultivate and stabilize. We awaken, we cultivate, we stabilize. We awaken, we cultivate, we stabilize. So let me read these again. And right here in this moment, I'd like you to, in your, in, in your soul gaze from your mind and heart, key in on one of the qualities that you feel that you can recognize you feel blessed because you taste it within yourself. Just key in on it. And we'll be entering into the meditation in a bit, but this is a bit of contemplation. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right. So keep noted what one jumped out to you the most there. And I want to move towards a secondary consideration with these, with these beatitudes. This is not mm, 
what's the word I'm looking for? This is, the Beatitudes are not fluffy. We can hear statements like this and they sound so lofty that it sounds like we could possibly take or leave them. What I would like to put out there is the possibility that they are very important to consider as part of your birthright and part of your self-realization. That they are worthy of your attention, that it's worthy to, to celebrate these, to step into the blessing and be consecrated in your own blood. I believe that when, if Jesus said these, we'll just say he did, that he he knew what the word blessed meant. And so it's not a, a type of spirituality that it's like, you know, if you're feeling like it, if you want, if you if you want some extra juice in your spirituality, these would be awesome. You know, take take these, take these, like he was passing out a dessert. But rather he, there there is an, an imperative. Be consecrated in the blood of your own poverty of spirit. Be consecrated in the blood of the importance to grieve and mourn. Be consecrated in the blood of being so in touch with who and what you are that you're meek. Be consecrated in the blood that you are given a fire to hunger and thirst for goodness, for truth. Be consecrated in the blood that mercy is part of the joy of intimacy. Be consecrated in the blood that realizing your own purity will set you free. Be consecrated in the blood that realizing yourself as an agency of peace will let you realize how much you are God incarnate. Be consecrated in the blood that not everyone's going to like you or believe in you or celebrate your voice or your vision or your personality or your gift in the world. And that even in being that in the world, you're going to have people not like you and think that you're unorthodox or worthy of being shot even. But your liberation isn't about that. It's about being who you are. What if we heard it that way? That it's not like, oh, a blessing. How, how I sometimes use that word. Oh, that was such a blessing. And I meant it. But did I really mean it with a lot of fire? Not always. Sometimes I've thrown that word around. But <laughs> what if we only use the word for be consecrated in the blood of I think that would give another tonality to our spirituality. So here's the invitation there is to take it seriously and settle for nothing less for yourself. Settle for nothing less for yourself. I want to read for you one of my poems, and then we'll jump into our meditation. And I think this points to, this was a moment of purity of heart for me. We have walked this path, so many lingering moments, my love. You always held my hand lightly, like a mess, like a mist that covers the land, imperceptible to the touch shrouded to the dense eye. When our eyes meet, and they do, ah, they do, concealment gives way to subtle revelation, like mist parted and dissolved, still hanging around the edges. The gaze mirrors the brilliant soul that gives me a guided step. to feel you once again on this path. Ah, 
You are my only vision. I can definitely say that in writing those words alone, there was the consecration of the silent praise of experiencing a taste of purity of heart and the discovery in you in that moment of seeing only God. So for our meditation, I want to do something of an activation of these beatitudes in our midst. It's going to be a guided meditation and uh, take the line, whatever line you chose, blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure of heart, blessed are the, whichever line you took. And I'm going to just take one line, but my line is to prompt you saying your line. So you're staying on mute. So if I'm, I'm going to use that poem. So I will simply, my line will be blessed are the pure in heart. You're going to say your line on your end when we get to that part. And what I'd like you to do is say, blessed am I, who are in spirit. Blessed am I, who mourn. Blessed am I, who am meek. So you're going to make it your own. So take just a minute and think through so you know how to say it. Blessed am I, showing mercy. Blessed am I as a peacemaker. So make the line your own. Own it. I'm going to own it. Okay, so I invite you to close your eyes. And we gather just as people of all ages have gathered for sacred purposes. Whether it was gathering in a large open space or on a mount or in a holy setting with sacred stones or within a church, we gather as well. And take a moment in silence to relax into the safety of gathering here together. And now, if you will, and there are 34 of us participating in this series, Imagine that in spirit, we are sitting in circle. And as we sit in circle, we become cognizant of those in the circle with us. I am in the circle, we are in the circle together. And I rise and come and stand behind you. And with gentleness and love, I open the Reiki symbols. About three inches above your head. And I place my hand upon the crown chakra and your own head.
and in the receiving of this blessing, I invite you to say your beatitude statement in drawing in a breath. I say mine as you say yours. Blessed am I, pure of heart. And inviting in a breath. Blessed am I, pure of heart. And inviting in a breath. Blessed am I, pure of heart. Continue saying your statement at your pace. Repeating over and over again, receiving as you state. Bless am I, pure of heart. Bless am I, pure of heart. Blessed am I, pure of Blessed am I, pure of heart. Blessed am I, pure of heart. And say your statement one last time. And I remove my hands and sit back in circle. And allow the blessing that is arising within you. Release this blessing to all in the circle. If you are meek, release that gift to all in the circle. If you are a peacemaker, release that gift. You are gifting and willing your blessing to all in our circle. And now open yourself like an open question to receive the blessing of all the other Beatitudes. Whether you draw them to the, your mind or simply open yourself in your own form of intention or prayer or longing open to be activated and enlivened in every single beatitude or in spirit to mourn to be meek to hunger and thirst for truth to be merciful to be pure in heart to be a peacemaker to stand without flinching for your own truth.
And in this blessing, we bring our short meditation to a close. I invite you to bring your palms together in front of your heart. And keeping the eyes closed, press the palms so that you feel yourself fully in your body. And bow your head ever so slightly, opening the gaze downward onto the palms. And when you're ready, lift your eyes. Lovely to be with you all. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>